Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If we can get started, I know there's still a stack of people outside registering. I'm sorry about the parking situation, but I'm glad you're all here. We're really pleased. We had 197 people respond, and so we're, we might be packed in here like sardines in a little while, but uh, hopefully it's worth it. I just want to welcome all of you to uh, DSA 2020 Focus on the Future, and I'd like to get a little sense of the audience. Uh, let me start by saying, how many architects are in the room, if you'd raise your hands? Okay. And how many structural engineers? Just a few. That's a shame, because quite frankly, a large part of what DSA does is structural engineering. And it's about time that the structural engineers join us in this process so that we can all do a better job. But those that are here, I welcome you and thank you for coming. Uh, how many represent uh, construction uh, program managers or construction managers that work for districts? Okay, a few. And how many contractors or builders are here? A couple. Dick Cowan, you're always around. I love it. <laughs> you bring a lot to the t <coughs> excuse me to the table. I appreciate that. How many facilities managers, facilities folks that work for districts? Good, welcome, thank you for coming. This is really gonna be hopefully an important piece for all of you. Uh, there's also uh, our staff, if, if they would, uh, the, from the Sacramento office, would you guys raise your hand? We've got a f quite a few of you, and you'll be sitting at various tables during the various times so that we can build a better relationship and communicate. Uh, I want to take this chance, this time rather, to thank uh, the American Institute of Architects California Council for being our partner in this event. Uh, they always come through for us and we really appreciate it. Uh, they've helped us in many, many ways, uh, as well as uh, SEOC, uh, the Structural Engineers Association of California, they have co-sponsored as well. And we really appreciate all of their participation and their help because without them we could not do this. Well, why do we have this event? What, what are we trying to achieve? We, we all have a set of mutual goals. Uh, and the first goal, the main goal that we've got is to build great environments so that our kids and those that are in the educational process can do their job and, our, and, and young people, some old, older people as well, can get an education. That's our real goal. As much as for most of us here, it's about bricks and mortar, at the end of the day, it's really, really about those people that are working in schools, uh, such as Cal uh, Sac State here, uh, as well as all the K through 12 and community colleges. Uh, the second reason for this particular environment, this particular meeting, is for all of us to learn how to do a better job, how to do this better than we've done it in the past. Uh, the world is changing rather dramatically. We'll talk about that in a little while. And we need to learn how to do this, how to relate to one another as well. And the third part, I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of the stress and strain. Uh, how can we eliminate some of that stress and that strain from, from, from all, of, on all of us? Uh, we need to be able to do that better and go home and enjoy our lives and at the same time turn out the quality that we're looking for. And the last part, and in many ways the most important, is I want to have fun doing this. I've been doing this for many years. Um, actually, it's over 55 years now that I've been involved in architecture and design and construction, and I still have a lot of fun with it, and I hope that all of us can enjoy the process uh, on a much better basis. So what do we want to accomplish? We want to accomplish building a better relationship, a, co a collaboration, uh, reinforce that, that, that collaboration between all of us. Because we've learned, I've learned, that we can't do it alone. We have to do it together. So that's one of the major items. And we want to focus on what you may need to know about us and about how we operate so that you can do a better job and make it easier for yourselves. So we've designed this process in, for two different uh, groups of people. One is for all of us in the morning, the morning session, uh, which is uh, designed to talk about the future, talk uh, at a 5,000 foot level about what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the afternoon, for those that are really in the weeds, really doing the work, spend some time really dealing with the issues that we're constantly having and how we can improve them. 
So I'm, my guess is that a bunch of you folks are going to leave at, uh, at, at noon time. I hope you'll stay for the lunch, the working lunch, because we're going to have a working lunch that will, in fact, be an opportunity for you to talk to us. We need to hear from you. The second part of the afternoon session will be for newbies. And let me ask, how many of, how many of you folks here are intending to go to uh, the second session, is, which is entitled, I've never done this before, help me. You want to raise your hands? Okay, there's, there's quite a few of you. It's going to be an opportunity for them to work directly with uh, DSA, uh, OPSC, and CDE. Let me start by telling you that we've given you some prepared questions. I think you probably all got them when you signed in. Uh, we're asking you to look at those questions, fill them out, give us any kind of information you can about what you think we can do better. Sign it if you want to. Keep it anonymous if you want to. But it's the only way that we can really grow and change and do a better job and let our staff know what, what, what you're thinking about us and what, the way you, re, you are responding to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to apologize right now for you. You're going to hear some coughing. Since Thanksgiving of last year, I've had this cold, and I get rid of it, and then I fly back to Sacramento, and I get it, and then I get better, and then it, the cycle goes on and on. So yesterday, it came back because I flew in, and then I sat next to somebody with a cold yesterday at a meeting, so here I am. So I'm only giving elbows. I'm not shaking hands with anybody. It's not because I don't love you. It's just because I don't want to give you my cold. Uh, in the afternoon at lunchtime, uh, we're going to, uh, as I say, put these four questions up on the wall and hopefully begin to build some dialogue among each one of the tables. And then I'm going to call in on some of the tables to stand up and start the conversation. And this day is really all about a conversation. Hopefully it's not a lecture. Hopefully it's all about uh, how we can do a better job and, and, and work together. So I want to step back and do a little bit of history. I think I want to bring everybody up to date about where we are. Uh, the opening session, this is a view through the rear view mirror, uh, who we are and what we've come through. And as I've said, we've had our great sponsors, but this is an image which many of you have seen before, if you've seen me talk. Uh, this is well over 100 years old. This is what DSA looked like. Uh, they're all a bunch of white guys smoking and drafting on paper. And the reality is that we don't have any of that anymore. Fortunately, we're much more diverse, not as diverse as we should be, but trying hard to make that happen. We do not smoke, although there's some people that come up that elevator and I can smell them a mile away. And we, I don't think you can find a drafting table here. Let me take a poll. Does anybody here have a drafting table that they work off of? Oh, and you guys aren't that old. How do you do that? <laughs> I, I still have to have the drafting table if I'm going to do any design. But <clears throat> we've really changed. But go back to our roots. Uh, we come start with the, uh, uh, the San Francisco earthquake, but really it's the 1933 Long Beach earthquake uh, that started the role of DSA involvement with, the, with uh, schools. Uh, and it was, came from the Field Act. What's really interesting is this is the entire Field Act. That one piece of paper, that's not the way it is now. It's just volume after volume of information and laws and rules and regulations, et cetera. So about six, seven years ago, I considered DSA, and I think most of us did, rather bureaucratic, really stopping work, giving us lots and lots of problems. We had, some, we had great people. We, we have the same great people doing really good work. But there was a little sense of chaos and very long bin times and all kinds of stuff happening. So we started working on changing the culture and changing the processes at DSA. And that's really what we're going to talk about today is our culture of trying to be your partner in this process and, <clears throat> excuse me, and also trying to move forward and join the 21st century. So remember, we've got a very, very long list of clients. Uh, we're talking about a thousand plus school districts. We're talking about nine to ten thousand campuses across the state of California. I believe that if we thought of ourselves as an enterprise, all as one, that we might be the largest landowner and the largest building 
uh, operator, maintenance managers, whatever you want to call us all, um, maybe in the state of California. It's a huge amount of people. In addition to that, we're responsible for some of the essential buildings, that is to say CHP and buildings of that nature that are really very important for the longevity of California and to help us in times of crisis. That's another part of our responsibility. We also write the codes. We write all the building codes for, uh, for schools. And in addition to that, we write the code, <coughs> the, the uh, access code for the entire state of California. And we apply that code to not only schools, but also to courts and campuses and public buildings across the state. And you get a sense of the size of projects, the number of projects that we've done uh, in the past year. We have a series of other responsibilities that are, are really important. Uh, the inspectors in the state of California that work for DSA are all certified and go through a, a certification process by DSA. The CAS program, we run that entire program, as well as laboratories and a bunch of other things that are really important to how we build schools and how we create safe and good environments. As most of you know, we have re four regional offices. Uh, we try to serve, uh, we look for continuity and, and, and for, for uh, <clears throat> the opportunity that all of those regional offices act the same, but they're, they're run by people. And the same as if you have any regional offices in your practices as architects, there's always some differences. We're trying to, get, to gain a much better sense of, of continuity between them. <clears throat> Give you a sense of where we are. This is as of January 31st. We don't have the February numbers yet. Uh, <clears throat> we've got one point, we had $1.4 billion in projects underway at the, uh, at the beginning, I'm sorry, at the end of, uh, uh, last month. Uh, we've returned a whole stack of projects, so we're, we're waiting for a flood of back check coming back in, and that's going to have some impacts on us because we can't do back check and also new projects at the same time. Uh, we have a, a, a large amount of scheduled projects that have come in, and it's been pretty amazing. We're talking about three point something or another billion dollars worth of work that has been in the process. And then we've got a whole bunch of projects that are pending construction, uh, almost $3 billion worth pending. And then uh, there's an act, it's got an active number here, 7.3 billion. I think that's really not, uh, that's an error. We're trying to work that one through. When projects are not totally certified and, and closed out, they remain in that area. And we know that a whole chunk of those projects are really occupied without certification. And we're trying to figure out how to get those particular uh, numbers for ourselves. We've been working on communication. Uh, is there anybody here that would like to go back to the system be we had before we had Box? Please raise your hand. Yeah, right. But you remember the struggles we went through, trying to learn how to use it, how to do it, all the, the naming uh, uh, standards, et cetera, et cetera. So it worked out eventually, and we're really pleased with that. And we use Box for a number of different things besides just the project management side <laughs> itself. Uh, how many of you are using certification Box? Well, there's only a few of you, and I think you're really missing out, folks. This is a system where we set up for every single project, a campus in the state of California, and you can go in through the region, to the, to, to the district, to the campus, and find out exactly what is missing and what is going on in terms of the certification of every single project. You ought to open it up. You ought to go look at it because it's really an incredible tool. And it was designed for you to be able to take your documents and dump them into that particular place, place then contact us and say, OK, we've, we've, we've finished it off. Go ahead and certify the project. So you ought to take a look at it. It's, it's an important piece. We also have another one that we've added, which is Inspector Box. Uh, how many have used that or looked at it yet? Nobody. OK. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector Box has been designed to give you a, an analysis of the work of our inspectors across the state of California. And we're building it as we go along. It still doesn't have a huge amount of, uh, of data in it, but our field engineers actually do an analysis of every single inspector across the state so that you can go in there and not do what I did. 
when I was in practice, they'd bring in the thing, I'd sign it, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it unless it had been some inspector that I had heard about. And it was not a very good job that, w that we were doing. We've now given us a tool so that you can look in there and say, ah, this is an inspector that does not have too much work, will be able to devote their, work to, their time to our project, and at the same time, make sure that all the documents are there and really does their job. It's a, it's a very, very objective way. It's not subjective, it's very objective, but it does give you a good clue as to this, the inspectors. I urge you to take a look at Inspector Box. Again, we're building that uh, data right now, and we're gonna talk more about the inspectors later on. Uh, I'll give you an update on certification. Uh, you know that we've got three different phases, if you want to call that, those legacy projects, those 16,386 uh, 16, uncertified projects that were handed to me when I came on board. Uh, you've heard me say it before, I will say it again. My wife bought my tombstone already. It says 16,386 because she got tired of listening to me say it all the time. And the fact is that we, that, that's that initial statement. We then moved to the inspection card, and there was a piece between which we called the transition projects. And those projects are, are, are the ones that were done during that period of, of time. Well, so let me tell you where we are. You have done a great job, an incredible job. We were at 16,386. We're now at 66, and I think we're actually lower than that, 6,600 projects, that's all that's left. That's the curve that we've got. It's important that you notice how this came about. It started in 1982, and we can talk sometime about how this occurred. But that's, we've done pretty well, you've done a great job, we still have a long way to go, and the reality is we probably are not gonna be able to certify all of them. And we know that a bunch of those projects don't exist anymore. And if you know they don't exist, Go into Google Earth, show us a, a, an image that they've been removed, and let's get them off, of, off the list. They, they, don't believe, they don't belong there. You don't need to have, carry the weight of them still being around. Transition projects, I thought we'd be able to do a little bit better on this. Uh, we're at, at very, almost 94% have been certified. There's a few stragglers that we can't seem to get rid of. Uh, hopefully you will help us get rid of those stragglers and clear this, the deck on this. I always felt that this was gonna be the easy one because we were all alive. Uh, the inspection card projects, we're doing really well. We're at 93%, and that's not a true number because that's only for the 120 days that we've got when we, when we go to a 301P. We know that many, if not most, of those projects are being certified maybe a week later, maybe a month later, maybe even a year later. We're trying to figure out how we can carve that number and keep, and keep it alive. But we should feel good about that. It work, the process is working, and we're ne <clears throat> the reality is that statistically, I'm not sure how much, how much higher we're, we're gonna be able to get. So that's who we are. That's what we're trying to be, is partners in your process. Uh, we want to make sure that you understand that we want to help you finish your projects and build them well. 